what's up, everybody? It's Dion Brown, your brother, your friend, host of the Man vs. Brand podcast. And I have Rick Elmore as a guest on the podcast today. We're going to talk about what it is specifically to find yourself in a space where you want to express thankfulness. Now, during the pandemic, a lot of us were in the mindset of doing check-ins, right? We were we were doing care calls, we were doing care notes, we were in the mindset of finding out in our network who needs support and how we could best support them. Mm -hmm. But now that that time frame is over, right? How do we still continue to exist in a space where we are showing not only appreciation for the people that we work with and are in relationship with, but check on the folks that probably need a message that uplifts them. How do we stay aspirational, inspirational to our network? Now, I know for a lot of folks, this feels like it's a labor intensive activity that writing notes, uh, creating a uh, little gift baskets, uh, putting together a phone list of people that you need to contact may feel as if it's something that you just don't have the time for. But we also know that people like to work with folks that they build relationships with. So how do you create solid relationships with folks that you have earned not only their trust, but their respect? I mean, I don't know. I have some ideas around it. I mean, Rick probably has uh, a bit more of knowledge in this space. Uh, please forgive me for the background noise, guys. You know I live in New York, so this is inevitable, <laughs> right? Um, so a little background on Rick. He owns and runs the company called Simply Noted. He's also a former NFL player. Now... Not only am I going to talk to Rick today about what it is to create these notes and, and his process, his company's stance on what it is to produce these, I also want to know a bit about what Rick is thankful for, right? When he's thinking about folks that he needs to do some level of outreach to, who's on his top list? How did they affect his life? If you're interested in this conversation, then welcome to the Man vs. Brand podcast. I hope that you enjoy this on YouTube and or any streaming platform. Rick, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks for having me, Dion. It's great to be here. Um, I, my name is Rick Elmore. Um, I'm the owner and founder of Simply Noted, what Simply Noted is. It's an engagement platform um, for businesses to easily integrate, automate, or scale sending genuine real handwritten notes. These aren't printed. They're not laser printed. Um, Simply Noted has built the best handwriting robot, the best handwriting platform, the best handwriting software uh, in the world. And we're really excited about what we're doing and what we're helping our clients uh, do. Um, our mission is to help you connect, build better relationships, build more loyalty, give a better customer experience. And the way that we do that is through connecting personally. And there's nothing like receiving a real, genuine handwritten note. Mailboxes are empty. The average person receives just two or three handwritten notes a year. And we're helping companies automate and scale that. All right, cool. So talk to me. What type of notes are these? Like, what, what are people sending out um, that are handwritten but also have value to the people that are receiving them? Yeah, so, I mean... We're a writing platform. We can really write on anything from a three by three, so three inches by three inches, all the way up to like a nine by 13. Um, but really what we try to do and consult our clients um, on sending are just, you know, greeting cards, five by seven foldovers or something that just really sticks out in the mailbox. When you think about your mailbox, um, it's usually bill mails, you know, bill, like number 10 envelopes, those long skinny envelopes. Um, or just flyers, right? So when you see that nice, like, you know, square kind of rectangle, uh, five by seven, just, it stands out. Um, so we really try to stick around that. Um, we use platforms like Zapier, Integrately, Make, uh, or Integromat, API, Salesforce, whatever CRM you have, we can integrate. Like anytime someone makes a payment, automate sending a thank you card. Really what we're trying to do here is help companies scale and automate 
building relationships because we all know in business relationships matter. Um, you know, loyalty is royalty. Um, when your clients are big fans about your business, they have solid relationships with you. They're going to spend more with you. They're going to be more forgiving with you. They're going to refer their friends. And we just think a handwritten note um, is just a great way to do that. Everything else is automated nowadays. If you think about it, emails, you know, call is, you know, even like dialers, for phone systems, text messages, um, even a lot of this print mail. But, you know, when you receive that handwritten note, it's the last form of communication that people don't think that can be automated. And we're building a platform that does that. So I spent a lot of time in real estate and studies show that people will open things that are the approximate size of an invitation, that just an invitation sized envelope gets more uh, engagement in terms of open rates than uh, other size mail, right? So, mm -hmm. so is it that you're sort of playing into this idea that, that folks, when they see something that feels like it's invitation size, that they'll more likely open that thing and then when they get the handwritten note that they'll be more appreciative for it exactly that's exactly what we're trying to do perception is reality um there are a lot of studies out there you can just google like handwritten note open rates online um it's 99.2 percent. so 99 out of 100 handwritten letters that you are going to send are going to be opened and it, it makes sense or if you got to re receive the handwritten note the handwritten envelope with a real forever stamp on that top right hand corner like you're going to be intrigued to open it because it's so rare maybe not 30 years ago when everybody was sending them right but we live in a digital world nowadays you know we get 150 emails a day you know all the social notifications twitters you know TikTok, all this stuff right text messages phone calls like our phone has just become such a burden so when you receive that handwritten note in the mail, it's almost like a treat. Like you're like excited to get it, you're kind of like interested, right? Um, so you're just more likely to open it. 99% rate, 99.2% uh, open rate, 100% read rate, at least someone's gonna read the first couple sentences. So if you have a really strong opening line, you know, for business development, whatever your call to action is, just make sure that hook's really good. But you know, when you're comparing it to print mail, you know, and we have a lot of people say, I'll just print something like 33, 34% of your print mail gets open. So, you know, two thirds of your budget is just getting thrown in the trash. So yeah. um, I know we're really excited about it. You know, we've been around for four years. Our platforms has grown tremendously. Um, you know, we have 400,000 users a month on our, our website. So yeah, it's, it's gained a lot of traction. We're excited about it. So talk to me a bit about the process. So I have a distinctive style of writing. Everyone does, right? So how can you automate my handwritten style so that regardless of the message, it looks as if it's come from me? So, I mean, we can convert your handwriting. Um, it is a process. We can send you some like basically like, like I, would, I mean, they're fun little sheets to fill out. You have to write out your alphabet, you know, all your numbers. We even have you like write silly sentences so we can see what your ligature styles look like, like how your letters connect to each other, like two T's, two M's, two O's. Um, you know, we have you write it out multiple times and we have one of our in-house designers actually create your handwriting style. This isn't a font creation. This is a handwriting style creation. Most people don't do it. It is a, a process, um, depending on the complex, complex or complexity of your handwriting style. It's going to cost anywhere from like a thousand to 1500 bucks. It takes our designers like three to five days to create it, but we have tons of handwriting styles available. Um, but the process is very simple. Um, you know, the last three years we were building our handwriting robots. So all of our budget, we're self-funded, we're mm -hmm. customer funded. So this is, I never thought I'd be building a software robotics industrial automation company with my <laughs> athletic background yep. and sales background. But uh, now that we're done with our robot, um, now we're going towards gearing, like updating all the features on our website. So we do have the ability to create your own handwriting style and you can use it right on the website. You can insert your signature um and then it's just you know create your card you can go to the website put your logo there type your message in your handwriting and literally just check out um we're really excited like we're i mean we have 31 updates to our website coming in the next nine weeks so i mean our website's changing every single week um yeah so we're constantly trying to innovate to stay ahead and make sure we're giving our clients all the best in class features absolutely so Talk to me about your journey. Like, how did you go from NFL player to a, 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 a note automation a company? Yeah. Like, what was that journey like? What, what brought yeah. you to this point that you're yeah. at? Yeah. So, my background is in athletics. Uh, I owe everything that I, who I am today to athletics. All my, the best things about me, you know, perse perseverance, hard work, teamwork, grit. 
um, passion, desire, all that stuff that I developed as an athlete, um, being able to come o- uh, overcome adversity, all that stuff's transferable to whatever you do in life. Um, and I, I truly believe a lot of athletes, if they can really like understand and harness that, like they can be successful in anything that you do, because I had two decades of working on that um, before I even got to the business world. But yeah, my background's in athletics, went to the University of Arizona, um, had a really good career there, was drafted in 2011 uh, in the NFL draft, spent only three years, almost four years in the NFL. Everybody has to hang up the shoulder pads and cleats someday. Um, And then I got into what everybody does, you know, competitive sales right out of sports because it's rewarding um, and it's exciting and it's new and you're not sitting in a cubicle every single day. Um, And that's what I needed. I needed to be out and be challenged. And after about five years, um, I had tons of success. First year was rookie of the year. Basically everything that made me successful as an athlete, I just transferred that uh, corporate sales, just hard work, not giving up, (laughs) willing to outwork the competition, like not accepting no, finding a way to get the yes. Um, first year was rookie of the year, just like my division. Next four and a half, five years, I was uh, either top one percent or top five sales rep in the company. And I just, I knew there was something else out there for me, so I went back and did my MBA in 2017, um, night school. And this year, I was doing it like an Ironman. I was doing. I had my first son. You know, I was working at a medical school or right. medical um, startup our medical company, you know, so I had a lot going on <laughs> and I was sitting in a, a, a marketing class, you know, 12 months into my program and I had a marketing professor going over the success rates in marketing and everything was super nominal, like, like literally nothing like emails, like, you know, low single digit direct mail, cold calling. And then he ends this three hour long lecture saying, Hey guys, you know, what works better now, if not better than ever is a good old fashioned handwritten note. They almost get open always 99% open rate and nobody's doing it anymore. Like it's a great way to set yourself apart, you know, from the competition, the crowd and, and make a lasting impression. And that I grew up in the generation without cell phones. I didn't get my first cell phone until I was like 16. So I always wrote handwritten notes and uh, just thought it'd be a really cool idea if we can figure out a way to like scale it or automate it for businesses, because nobody has time nowadays to do it. We're all expected to do everything yesterday, you know, thanks to Amazon, right. You get everything in like two hours. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, a classmate of mine and myself started researching what was available. There was a company out there called bond at the time venture fund. I think they had $2 million in funding, but they were just using like really bad, like pen plotters. So I bought one of those pen plotters, started playing around with it. And I was like, if I have to build a business off this technology, I'm going to sh- like, <laughs> gonna, like shoot myself because it's so bad. Like you have to hand feed it every single time it writes. So, um, yeah, just got started there. Had a vision. Um, you know, you, you just got to get started. You can't wait for it to be perfect. It can't be analysis paralysis. And uh, fast forward almost five years, we've built our own handwriting robot um, that's completely automated. Um, has six pending patents, three design, three utility. Yeah. 11 employees like in our office every day I have 22 if you count like my contractors like people are you know just helping on projects so yeah i just my mindset is like when i say i'm going to do something i'm going to do it um, i'm really passionate about this i believe in the problem that we're solving um, we live in a very disconnected world and i wouldn't this business would not have grown to where it is today if handwritten notes didn't work like people appreciate them businesses find value in them there's always a reason to thank somebody or send a birthday card, an anniversary card. And the competition's, the competition's more fierce than ever. Like our clients are more willing to try competitors um, at a higher rate than ever because the, the differential differentiating factor between products now are so tight because everybody's out there innovating all the time, growing, throwing money at stuff. That relationships at the end of the day, you know, in the next 10 to 15 years, are going to matter more than ever. And if you pay attention to where like private equity is investing a lot of money outside of AI, because everybody's hot on AI right now, it's these gifting platforms that are engaging people trying to stand out and, you know, grab that attention and grab that relationship stronger than these people that are just doing all these, you know, software automated companies. So we're excited. We're ahead of it. I I do believe the space will get, you know, a little bit busy. We'll we'll probably start selling our robots now to our competitors now, like, you know, know, that we built them because they are best in class. They really are. So um, yeah, you know, it's just a journey. It's a process. You have to be passionate about it. Failure has never been an option for me. And once I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to literally kill myself trying. So um, it's really helped us push forward over the last five years. Cool, man. So talk to me like in your own life, right? Who would you write notes to? Like, Who are like, what are some folks that have positively affected your life where, you know, in the past and or present, 
where writing them a note would be something that you would do right now? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I have a really, really good tribe, a really good, like close commu community of people who've supported me along the way. I still think the best way to build a relationship with somebody is to sit face to face with them. Sure. Um, but unfortunately we can't do that all the time. So I try to send a handwritten thank you note, handwritten. I mean, I'll use my own service every single day. At least once a day, I'll try to think of somebody who helped me yesterday, regardless if they took a call, right? Or somebody, a vendor who allowed us to, you know, they did something extra special for us. It doesn't matter how small it is. I'll try to thank anybody, you know, for anything because it is like people go out of their way. Everybody's stressed every single day. They have their own responsibilities, their own worries. Um, I try to send at least one thank you card a day. And there's a I'm trying to remember who the author is, but there's a great book about sending one thank you card a day and how it's going to not only like affect your life personally, because you're going to have like a more outlook of appreciation, you know, versus like poor me and self-loathing. Like when you start changing the way you look at the world, like how can I find the good and who did, who's helping me and how can I appreciate that and tell them how I appreciate um, then for that, like it changes your perspective out on life. So it's actually been a really good thing for me personally, but I mean, there, there's so many people to thank along this journey. You know, my, I mean, parents, give me your top five. Sure. I mean, my, my parents, my wife, my wife is supporting me out throughout this. Um, the university of Arizona. Um, I would not be here if I was not in that lecture doing the, the MBA. Um, you know, I was there seeking and looking and, you know, <laughs> they've been really good to me. Um, I've had good business mentors, uh, a guy named Darren, Darren Webb here in, in Arizona. Um, he's been there since day one, kind of been a bouncing, uh, a, 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 what do you call it? A sounding board. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go to him. We, we grab breakfast, you know, every three or four months and we just talk about business, what's going on. And, um, I mean, our team, like, <laughs> that's like, like, you know, I have, I have a, a friend, his name is Peyton. He came out from California day one, like literally he's gone through all the, all the hardships with us, all the, the, the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, I mean, tons. I mean, I have three really good friends from my MBA, like who still support me, check in with me. Um, you know, yeah, Ryan Schulte and Brian Coleman. <laughs> Jay, I mean, there's tons of great people. I mean, listen, like, this is a good time it, to show it, it, it takes that, a tribe. Right? Like, you know, it takes a tribe. I'm telling yeah. anybody who's paying attention to this, you can't do it alone. I used to be somebody who said, I'm just going to push and I'll figure it out, but you can't, you need help. Um, I had that realization a couple of years ago. You have to ask for help. People want to help. You know, people um, appreciate that you go to them for help, you know? So um, yeah, it's really important to, um, you know, build that really strong tribe around you and, uh, you know, make sure that you, they know that you appreciate them. Cool. So you mentioned being privately funded, right? We're not. I mean, we're customer funded, so we have no loans, no debts, no funders. Yeah. Cool. So, so what's what's the differentiator for you in getting investment from like a venture capital versus being customer funded? So we, you know, we we have a lot of people that reach out. You know, and a lot of it's just like sales reps for like VCs, just trying to find anybody to you know get funded for. But we've talked to VCs. The 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 reason that we don't go get funding because I, I have a vision for this company and I know that, you know, it's going to be a lot bigger than what it is now. And we're just too early in the process to give up. Um, plus, once you receive money, there's just gets too many cooks in the kitchen. And, you know, we have a vision for where we want to go. But, yeah, we've talked to the venture capital, you know, founder uh, people before. And, you know, they'll, they'll offer you money and they'll ask for way too much. And um, I'm just not willing to do that. And, um, but going self-funded, it, it, it forces you to be a lot more, um, how would you say, um, responsible, yep. you know, uh, there's a really good, I think it's Jim Collins. He talks about the bullets in cannonballs scenario. Um, you know, the companies that go the distance aren't the ones out there just going crazy and just spending money on everything they're testing. So like, imagine you're on a pirate ship and you're fighting off of another pirate ship and you only got one cannonball, but you got a bunch of bullets, you know, before you, you fire that one cannon, that's going to, or that one cannonball, that's going to save your life. You got to make sure that it's going to work, you know, so you can't just shoot it. So you got to test shot, test shot, test shot, test shot. And when you know it's going to work, right. And you have that budget to spend, you fire off that one cannonball to make sure that it works. So we've done a really good job of being responsible with our money. Um, you know, and I, and I think there's a lot of ego in business. You got to take the ego out. A lot yeah. of these people don't fight 
you know, I'm fighting an infinite battle. Like I'm uh, progress is infinite. You're never going to be done. You know, we've had people in this industry who just tried to spend a lot of money on marketing and they get too heavy and too fat early with too much, you know, overhead. And then they end up going under in a year or two. So you got to have like an infinite mindset on the process. The process never ends and being self-funded, it helps you like keep that vision versus just going from funding to funding to funding, just spend all the money and get funded again, spend all the money and get funded again. And um, it's just not, in my opinion, the best way to build a business. Absolutely. All right. So you mentioned uh, you have a child, right? Do you have more two. than one now? Yep. Two. Yep. Two. All right. So what are you talking to them about uh, thankfulness and, and just engaging with others? Like what's your lessons there? Well, they're really young, <laughs> two and four. So, um, you know, what we're trying to instill in them are a lot of the um, attributes we learned as athletes of just, you know, having a positive attitude, you know, getting back up when you get, you know, you fall back down, learning how to process your feelings. So, <laughs> you know, when you get really upset, learning how to take deep breaths, right. And, and yeah. control your breathing. Um, but I don't know if you have young kids, like you, you can have conversations, but it's not like, Hey, let's talk about this, you know? And it's, well, no, but, but I do think that you, you build a foundation, right? Really early on, right. For what mm -hmm. it's going to look like, right. How do you respond to things? How are you reacting? Yeah. Right. How are you sharing? Right. How are you engaging? Right. And so it, it, I think that it's never too young, but, and I love what you're saying about, you know, just kind of the perseverance and sort of using those lessons that you learned as an athlete and then mm -hmm. imparting those onto the, what's going to be your legacy, right? Ultimately mm -hmm. the NFL thing won't matter, you know, simply note it will be great, but, but your biggest legacy will be your children, right? And, 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 Absolutely. and, and how they show up in the world and their citizenship and, and what they are to other people. And so well, I, I think, I, applaud. I think, um, Children are great imitators. So um, you can say what you want to say, but if you're not being a great person, it's not going to matter what you're saying. There's a lot of people out there. They'll say, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And I'd rather lead by example. Sure. Um, you know, I'm a, a loyal, hardworking, committed, you know, person that doesn't quit. And I think my kids see that every single day I get up regardless of how bad yesterday was. And I keep pushing forward. And I think that's something that, um, they'll see, um, you know, sure. fighting through no, all the hard times, you know, every relationship has their good, the good times and bad times, being able to control yourself and the good and bad times. Right. That's Absolutely. something that they're going to be able to see. So, um, I think I'm, I'm more of like a leader by example. Um, I'm not like the rah, rah, you know, here's your Tim Tebow pump up speech, you know, Tony Robbins type of thing. Um, I'm the type of person that you're going to be able to count on, you know, and know that this guy's going to be reliable. He's going to be hardworking. He's going to stick it through. He has all the grit in the world. And um, those are the type of qualities I want my to instill in my kids because grit and perseverance, you can apply that to anything. Being a good person, you can apply that to anything. Um, being loyal, honest, having integrity, you can apply that to anything. But that is seen. You know, you can talk to them about it, but you have to live it. And, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of fake people online, you know, trying to make it look like they're doing something. But how you live your life, you know, when, when the cameras aren't on, um, that's what really matters. And that's really what I stick to. So, um, yeah, but you never yeah. know. Kids are their own people. Like, <laughs> great. No, great, have, point, man. great points. Yeah. yeah. Great points. All right. So. Um, before I ask you to share uh, how folks who are listening can get in contact with Simply Noted, I have two questions that I ask everyone who's on the podcast. First is on any streaming platform, uh, book, uh, you can do any streaming platform. Um, what's something that you recently engaged with that you thoroughly enjoy? Well, I'm on YouTube every day. Um, yep. I am a consumer of content. I'm constantly wanting to know. Um, I like learning. That's been one of my my discoveries uh, as an entrepreneur is that every problem is solvable if you're willing to work hard enough to solve it. Yep. A book that I'm reading right now, it's actually right here, is Traction um, by Gina Wickman. If okay. any small business owners are out there, um, it's kind of like the uh, um, E Myth by Mike Lee Gerber. It really starts like helping you dial in systems, you know, so you can work 
on your business and not in your business. Like every CEO is going to work in their business for the first two or three years. But in order to scale um, your business, you have to remove yourself completely. And that's really where I've been the last 12 months. But um, that's a great book. But um, I think, you know, leaders are readers, leaders are learners. Um, you know, CEOs are readers and learners. And if you don't have that mindset and you don't thoroughly enjoy it, don't, don't, <laughs> don't take the jump because like, yeah, it's just a ton of responsibility and anxiety and stress. Um, a lot of problems you have to solve, you know, versus just being a part of a team and uh, just doing your job. You know, I Absolutely. I mean, I think that applies to anyone in any profession. If you're not learning based, then yeah. you'll hit like uh, a ceiling Mm -hmm. where you know you're just you're just based on experience right you you only take into account your own lived experience and not the experiences the lessons of others so when you're learning based you get more diversity of information into what you can apply and utilize for your own personal endeavor if it's entrepreneurship or if it's being a nurse or a sanitation person right like being learning based i think supports everyone's mission to just live a better life mm -hmm. Yeah, right. if you you want to, yeah, the final statement, like, you be self aware, if you think you know everything, you know, nothing, you like, you got to have the mindset, like, I know nothing, Like you may know what you know, but you're ignorant to everything else. And like, there's so much information out there that can make you better as a person, I uh, can make you better as a business owner, better as an, a teammate employee. Um, but that's the mindset you got to have It's just like, there's so much I can learn. And I want to learn because I want to get better. Absolutely. All right. Second question. Uh, same setup, any streaming platform, um, book, uh, YouTube. What's something that you thoroughly enjoy that people may not necessarily know about you? Like what was something that you like? It might be that you like a particular style of sport that isn't aligned to like football or you may well, I'm... Uh, appreciate a certain activity or hobby that is represented in a book or and or a streaming platform. <sighs> I mean, that's, I mean, I'm a I'm six, five to 50. I'm a big guy. I mean, I like, I like physical activity. I mean, I like, like traversing mountains, you know, backpacking Iron Man. So I don't know how that would relate to a book or a streaming platform. Um, I don't I think. Mean, is there any knows. podcast that you listen to that? No, all my podcasts are business <laughs> <laughs> and listening. I mean, that's what I'm, I mean, I'm engulfed in business right now. Yeah. Trying to, you know, build a $30 million business. So, um, yeah, it's a great question. I don't really do tons of, you know, listening for, for my Recreation? hobbies. None. No. <laughs> no. That's all good. Well, it's listen, all in the show notes, I'll recommend yeah. to some folks an sure. Iron Man podcast that might be interesting to them. Yeah. If you check out the episode, then you may also <laughs> click into it and see if you like the podcast also. Maybe I need to do that. My wife says that you need to stop doing all, uh, my wife does say you need to do more, not, or is it more nonfiction? No, yeah, more fiction, non rather than nonfiction. Because yeah. I'm always like trying to learn. <laughs> yeah, man, listen, it's great. Yeah. All right, cool. So talk to everyone. If I'm listening right now, then I'm like, Rick sounds like a really great guy. The company sounds like it's really cool. It's something that I want to uh, pick up for my business. I think this could support our mission. How? What's the best way that someone can can get more content, get more information about Simply Noted? Yeah, I mean, you can just, we send a really nice sample kit for free. I mean, we spend about 20 bucks on this sample kit that we send. Just go to Simply Noted. That's S as in Sam, I, M as in Mary, P L Y, noted.com. In the top right hand corner of the home screen, you'll see request a sample. Just request it. Um, we send you a whole portfolio of everything that you're going to want to know. And what happens is when people get it, number one, that's going to blow their mind. They're going to, th everyone always thinks it's printed. It's not printed. Like we literally have robots, like real robots that hold pens that run all day, like r running for hours that just write out your custom handwritten notes. But when they get it, it blows their mind, like lick your thumb, try to smear the ink. Um, and then they call us like, literally it happens at, like a lot of the time they'll call us like, no way, this is amazing. And then they like, Hey, can you do this? And we help them figure out how to do their project or set up the automation or just get connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn all day. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, to help them there as well. Awesome, brother. Hey, guys, thankfulness is a lifestyle, right? It's a discipline. It's something that if you time block for and really put your mindset to it, it's something that I think you can reap great rewards from. Building relationships is the best way to create business, 
but also to create a better life. If you want a life worth living, if you want a business worth having, then this is the type of stuff that you need to engage with right now. Advertisements, great. Email blasts are great. Tech messages are great. But there's something about connecting with someone in an interpersonal way that really can advance not only what you want from them in terms of business, but just what you want in, from them in terms of a relationship. It builds better connection. And if that's something that you're interested in, then check out Rick Elmore, see what he's doing over at Simply Noted. And guys, I appreciate your time and for listening into this episode and or watching it on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Bye.